Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is the 700th video for Infinity that I've produced. So in celebration, I'm going to give away some more macros. If you've watched all 700, well done and thank you. So what this is going to be, if we look down here, is is so these are the macros. The I've already given well, fairly recently the grading tones and the grading monadic, which is changing one colour. Now this we're coming now to the dyadic, which is two colours, which is perhaps the most useful set to do with them. But there will be more in future. And the way to get to it is go to the link down below, go to the resources page there and it'll download, show you how to download the macros and then you can either drag and drop them onto here or go to the handbook at the top of the library and go to import macros and it will drop them in the bottom like this. So let's open them up and you'll see there's a set here of complementary ones which are opposites, they match together. So complementary colours are ones which are opposite on the colour wheel. Take any one here, so red and cyan, yellow and blue and so on as are indicated here. And the asymmetric are from different positions like red and green and so on, which are just useful sometimes. What we've got there, you'll see here complementary red and cyan 1 and red and cyan 2. So let's look at them. If I click at the first one here, then you see the red has been increased, the cyan's again increased, it's pushed or covered up the colours here, which means the oranges will appear more red. And here the things which appeared blue before will begin to look a bit on the cyan side. And we've got controls here, which we'll look at in a moment. But just to complete this here, this when it says red cyan 2, if I click on that, you can see there now I've got red and cyan here. So in other words, all the colours around here, yellow through to magenta, will all appear red. And green all the way around to blue will appear cyan. It will not be just a two-tone picture of red and cyan because the selective colour protects the tones as well. So, so the blacks and whites, so you'll see that it, it the picture will still make sense but will have a significant bias on the reds and the cyans in this case. Okay, so the controls you've got here. The rotate here, if I turn this, but if you slide this nothing happens which is because with the macro here it doesn't change until you let go. So the easiest way to do this is to put your mouse over here and rotate the, the mouse wheel and it will start to rotate this here. This diagram by the way you can get from the resources page through the link down below. This in the test cards. And if you want to move this one at a time, then you can rotate the mouse wheel. Hold down the shift key and it'll move 10 at a time. So you can see that I can rotate it quite a lot. So if I rotated it all the way around like this, so it went to 180 degrees, now everything that was blue would be appearing red and everything that was red and, uh, red and magenta and yellow will be appearing as cyan. So if you rotate it, say like this to there, the shift will shift colors. So if I change the colours here, you can see here I'm changing the colours. So you could, with this, do all kinds of combinations, but the common ones I've got down here, so it's quicker to get them through that. So let's have a look at this in a real picture. So you take a picture like this and go, right here, what are the common colours in here? Well, there's a blues and, blues and cyans in the sky. Down here there are yellows and reds. So maybe we can try the reds and cyan. So I click on that and that immediately applies it. You can see the difference it makes to the picture straight away. The strength here, by the way, is, the, is effectively going to be the opacity of the final one. So if I put this, say, to around about 50%, so it's not as strong, then if I apply that, it comes up here as a single layer there, which is a group. And the group there, the overall opacity is 52%. That's the one I just set, which is called the strength. And to change the rotate and shift, these are in these two here, which are an HSL layer down below, which is just changing the hue in those. And you can just click on that and delete that if you want to get rid of it. 
So and I can literally click on these in turn, just go through these, find which ones I like and so on. So the orange and teal works quite well, as you might perhaps might expect on this. And if I go to orange and teal too, you think it might be stronger, but it's not because there's more tones in this. So literally find the one you like, adjust these, in particular the strength, and then apply it if you like. So that's that one there. So yeah, that one there, I'd probably use orange and teal one there just to make the difference there. And if I say applied that, then you see the before and after. It's quite a quite a difference. So the next one. So this scene here, we can play a game. We just go through things and see what you like. Notice here, by the way, as I'm going through them, the stronger colours get changed most strongly. Yes, yeah, so you can get move them around here. So because there's no people in this and these colours, you've got a lot more scope to change the colours in this. But for this one, if I go to Rose and Spring 2, I quite like this because it, it gets that two-tone and gets the colour in the houses there. And it's still quite credible. And so you've got very much a colour grading scheme happening with this. Let's try another one. OK, so here we've got a street scene. And what is going to happen here is the colours that you put into this will affect particularly the stronger colours here again. So let's try. Um, look at the ones down here. These, by the way, as we said, complementary does opposite colours. Asymmetric tells you the colours here, the two colours that you go. So we got here, we got a... Uh, a cyan and a red. So can we find cyan and red in here? Or maybe it's written down as red and cyan. And you're not going to get all combinations here. Well, that's right and cyan and red to the top, isn't it? So that will immediately push that into that direction. So that and all the other colours here, you're pushing things more towards red. So you've got a lot of cyan in red in here. But because you've got strong colours, you can do colour change here. So you can do things like See, if you could push that to blue, sometimes it just goes too far on this. And you can see the effects. So, yeah, perhaps that one. I quite like that. Cyan and yellow. So it's pushing the reds there, particularly into the yellow. So what's next? Okay, this one's a bit tricky because what have you got here? We've got green and, and cyan. So if I go, well, let's try that. Have I got a green and cyan one here? And let's have a look. Red, green, green and blue, perhaps. But look what's happened here. Although this is green, but now the green has turned this guy green and you don't want green in skin. So maybe something like um, magenta and yellow. That's quite interesting. Magenta and cyan, that's nicer because you've got magenta is OK on skin. And this around here then is pushed a lot into the science. So you've got that two-tone kind of effect, but with other colours coming through. On number five here, classic seascape. Yeah, there's a little bit of a sunset here. So you might want to push the colours on that. So we might go up to orange and teal. That will give you an interesting one there. So try those on there. You can always adjust the strength of that. But we can also try other ones like that. So red and cyan is going to give me quite a strong colour here in the sunset. That might be more interesting. Or even try some things like the rose and spring. So the, that, the, the spring is a green. Uh, spring green is the colour between green and cyan. And lime green is the colour between uh, yellow and green. So what's next? Uh, this one here, again, you've got strong colours in here. So we want to pick up some of these and try to change kind of more consistent colouring through these various boxes here. So we might try some of these. We'll get the number two ones to... Because the number two ones tend to push the colours a bit harder on this. So, so something like that is too strong. 
but you can always pull things down. But that's quite interesting. There you go. It's just an orange and teal one again. Look at the, the teal coming through here. Maybe red and cyan. So you've got the cyan colouring the water and the grey in the sky and the red coming into in this area here. So there you go. We just do one more because we're having fun. So there's a lot of different colours in here, but they're all strong colours. This means we can go through quite a lot. Go to the number twos for a stronger effect. Oh, we can literally click down those and see what happens. Or we can just go to these here, for example, and just again, just hold down the shift key and you can just rotate the number of colours there and try them on the different ones here and they'll have a different effect. Sometimes if you want to check the colours if you're using this is to start with the colour wheel first and then take what you've got here. Do you can you can literally if you apply that you've got the complementary red there because it's just colours on here I can just hit control C to copy this go to something like this here cancel that there and just control V to paste it and there you go I've pasted that colour scheme in. Anyway that's it 700 videos Next one is number 701 and thank you very much for watching.